Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop, the EOD, Mark II. What we are doing today is making something. Duly noted by the astutious of us, the machine tool over yonder, right full of the disgusting carbohydrate foam. It being from dead carcasses, is rather cheap. So what we're making is a copper swing press. Now, partner, a gift is in the given, and of late, what's come off this machine, Nobody wants, on account of they already got spare puppies. So the essential craftsman sent me a hammer. I'm fixing to do the same. Well, it's prudence, the safety ghost, it's conjugating a visit. We are just going to go over a couple of things, what I've learned. Learning the first night shift, always fucking shit up. I don't know how that bit of carbide got busted in there, but I surmise it had something to do with a bumblefuck on the controls. The trouble being paralleled in all human endeavors, this great ghastly hunk of iron and electrons is only as dumb as the monkey running the button. Uh, despite a safety warning here, <laughs> I hit the go button and I hadn't set the offset. This machine does not know where it's at. So you got to tell it where it's at and what it's to. Call this espèce de dummy. How many times you got to tell yourself not to leave that G5092 set at anything but zero, ought zero. We'll change that right now before I get all in a big fucking panic and forget about it again. Another trick I picked up quick, fast, in a hurry, which I hope you won't need to, but very likely will, is when you're flying the plane, your primary function is to fly the fucking plane. Busted my first tip. And you can see, I glued it back together and she worked just fine, but then at the back of your head, you're always kind of second guessing and that's no fucking good at all. So I got a new probe tip for the Renishaw. Another strange thing done in the midnight sun. I'm quite chuffed with myself on this one. Got smart. I set the tool change position just above the corner of the vise, where the workpiece always is, so that instead of needing to move it forward and back to and fro, all I gotta do is move it down and she's right there in order to do the probing routine. I'm sure that it goes without saying for someone who's a proper machinist, will probably learn all that in school, but. You see kids, this is where the confuser maximum overdrives you into thinking that it's smart when it ain't. Anytime now, here we go. We're just doing a probing. That way it knows where the workpiece is. I got the dingle arm in there just for locating. We're gonna run this in Bridgeport mode. I could run this with a canned routine. The problem is with the, the Haas Power VPS, I don't trust it. It's got the faults and all that glitchy shit. Now they're selling it, uh, that VPS system as an extra. So if you pay an extra 2,000 bucks, then I guess you get a right to complain. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> that's a freebie. <laughs> the problemo with copper is it's oft quoted gumminess, when in fact it's, it's, it's ductility. It's so ductile that the chip just conforms to any shape and it gums right up. So what you need to do is make sure that the chip is small and keep it evacuated. So as such, we're gonna peck drill this. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Oh, fuck yeah, that'll do. One thing I forgot is this Bridgeport milling machine has a DRO. Hadn't I had the foreskin to probe all this in and make sure she's good and proper in the waist, I would have just flipped this around, drilled her from the other side, and this plug would have popped out. But seeing as how I already put the work in, just gonna cobble it. I'll, I'll work this back and forth until she breaks off. We're getting close, not to worry. I promise to tell you when. Sorry about that, I forgot. Prudence being otherwise indisposed, I am not going to trust to my false bravado. We're gonna run through the carousel, check all the tools. As you can see, this rougher, three foot rougher. She got some Samiri action aluminium on there. I'll show you a trick to get rid of those somebody told me. Fantastic fucking trick. Here's the trick, a twofer, a double ender, mind. Do not fuck with a man what keeps plastic oil barrels around and 50 pounds of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide on its own ain't tea bag, but you mix in some of that dihydrogen monoxide known by the state of cancer to cause California and boy howdy. 
She's a nasty witch's brew. Huh? Huh? Like store-bought. Focus, you fuck. Hold up, I hear you lighting your pitchforks. This is not for heavy putting, just for kissing. We gotta get into a bore, a tapered bore, and it's uh, that's why it's so hung out there so far. It's not normally that long. First stop is to half inch twist drill right through the middle of that. Unfortunately, the night shift guy what pisses in the coolant is also the guy what embedded uh, the carbide into that. As such, I don't have a spotting drill. I'm gonna go in with the end mill and flatten that bottom off and then go in real quiet like with the drill in order to get that hole centered up. What a horrible sound. As you get older, you learn a few tricks not to release the shmoo prematurely. Trigger discipline. Before we hit that green button, we got to make sure everything is 100% on. And this is part of it. We're running the graphics. We're just going through. That's a whole lot of gobbledygook to me, but you see the tool moving around there? Check. We run the graphics. The Z height looks good. The tool offsets all goo. Work offsets, G54, all probed in. The tools are in good condition. Feeds and speeds, uh, feeds and rapids rather. Let's see here, we'll go 100% feed rate, 25% rapid. And then G92 is set to zero. Now the easy part. You know the drill. Narf nar. This is the sketchiest part right here, the drilling. Now we're through. Now we know our Z height's not gonna fuck off on us. Put her in 100% rapids. We're just gonna face mill this off with a two inch face mill. Inserts for aluminum. Just buck down the feed rate to 70%. There's that rougher. Now we're gonna helical that tapered bore. I just change the feed rate a little bit here. Yikes. Go 100% feed on this guy. I added in the uh, M138, which is the spindle speed variation. It's varying by 555 ripples per 1.5 seconds. And that's to effectively reduce chatter by not allowing the tool to set up a harmonic. As you see, lots of air cutting, optimization. It is not. There's lots of, lots of room for improvement, but this is a one-off, not a not a production part, so it's, it's a matter of diminishing returns. You want to spend a couple hours at the confuser. Here we're doing the contours with the 3 8 ball mill. It's just sort of roughing it out a half inch or a 0.1 step over. And then we'll go over it with the quarter inch ball mill as well, really give her a proper angel kiss. This three flue quarter inch really gets the smooth flying. We got all she'll suffer at 15,000 ripples, varying by 555 ripples per 1.5 seconds. Just taking a whiff of an angel haircut, but you'll see the, the overall aesthetic effect is incredible. Now, if and we didn't have spindle speed variation on, you wouldn't see that spindle load go up past 5%, maybe 10% because it's 15,000 ripples. But you see, it's really under cyclical load when it's doing that SSV. I don't know how good it is for the spindle motor itself, so I only use it when I think I need it. Just to check over here, we can look at the diagnostics, and the spindle motor temperature is climbing but it's nowhere near anywhere to be concerned about. The interesting thing is I can see the lights flickering in the shop, these LED lights, and the AC line voltage is varying not by much, but it's enough 
to be visually perceptible. That's right, sir. Set up the first. Down in a bun, son. We had to come at her bottom side topwards on account of that bore was tapered. So we had to come in from the bottom. Now we got her fixed right round. And thank you to the kind stranger in the stained trench coat. Are those stains or wet spots? What told me a good way to, uh, to indicate this, to get your offsets, is to have a bore. Now this isn't a bore, this is a drilled hole. At least I got something to blame if I'm off. What I had been doing, I was checking the vice corner, but the problem is if the saw cut isn't perfect, you're gonna be off by that much. Whereas in this case, you do an operation what goes through, clean through to the other side of the part, whether it be a bore or a drill, and then you can pick up that location for your starting point, for your work offset. That way you don't get the step over error here. And because the head of the, the hammer is proud in the middle, we gotta put these here parallels the wrong way around on either side in order to, to get this in there proper. Something funky going on with the sinister side. The five thou off just so happens a piece of papilla is four thou, so good enough. Uh, no, the other left. Now with the wee ruby tip, we're gonna probe that bore. It'll tell us dead center where it is and then put that into the offset table so the confuser knows where it's at in time and space. And that's her. Dead nuts. Now for tits and pickles, we're gonna take a little heavier cut. about a quarter inch of copper right in the bucket bucket. I changed this program a little bit. I put the spindle speed variation on the rougher. You noticed in the first, on the first side there, it wasn't engaged and it was kind of humming along a little bit. So I thought I'd give ourselves a fighting chance. All right, let's see how she do. What you got here is a hot chick, long hair and tight jeans. Good from far, but far from good. It's a dude. There's some um, pickup here. One of the tools either got chowdered up or picked up some of that gummy, gummy copper. Where is it? Yeah, you see right in here. Looks like that 3 8 uh, ball end mill picked something up. Yeah, she's all galled up here. Let's have a look at that. Pretty fine looking fingerprint until you get over here behind the dumpster and she rubbed one out. There's the bastard there. It's a four flute, so likely picked up something and then flung it off eventually, but I'll have to get a three flute. Well, let's see how she hang with a genuine lick of the hickory stick. Put her in the big end. Oh, I think that'll be fine. That'll be just fine. You think one more? One more. Beauty. Pull up, pull up. We're off course. I like chickens hammers. Not just for hammering anymore. I sort of got their cattywampus there. I like to go on the diagonal. Probably doesn't make any lick of difference, but style being what it is. Ah. Well, who amongst us couldn't use a little Photoshop? I'd let her eat crackers in bed. As for this hammer, she ain't tea bag. It's quite pretty. It's got a hell of a haft and a nice balance to her. Maybe a little bit over heavy. I'll show you some of the little mistakes. The thing is, nothing's ever, everything's imperfect, incomplete, and impermanent. That's the way of the universe.
see there was a couple weird whoop de woos here on the same face. That's okay because this is the face which you can put molten lead on. So you get soft face, you get even softer face. And then the rougher came in here, came in too far, took little chunks out. So you want to clean that up. And then the other part, of course, is just that angel hair where we flip it over and it's got to meet up just the perfect. I think the only way to do that, fix that, is instead of drilling out that, is boring it, drilling it and then boring it. And then we get the, the perfect sizing. Probably five thou. Well, she's but three thou according to the machinist approximators, which is plenty good enough for the girls I go out with. Still disconcerting to have a lip there, but first time he wax it with anything. She go. Now that right there is the cock for Dolly. I'll just go ahead and keep this scrap one here. I wouldn't want it to get out in the wild. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.